Once upon a time, in the late 1800s, a gang of outlaws arrived in a small town named Sweetwater. Their leader was a man known as Blackjack, and his right-hand man was Kevin. As they settled in, Blackjack observed his nephew, Sonny, playing with the local children. Doubts crept into his mind about whether Sonny was cut out for the life of a bandit. Swiftly, Blackjack reprimanded Sonny, urging him to behave appropriately. Soon after, Blackjack ordered his men to rob the town's bank. Inside, he forced the terrified bank teller to open the safe. When the teller refused, Blackjack ruthlessly shot off one of the teller's fingers to coerce compliance. Meanwhile, outside the bank, Sonny, who was keeping watch, caught sight of a prostitute named Dolly. Eager to impress her, Sonny shared one of his cherished novels about Dolly, a reputedly kind-hearted lady of the night. He asked her to sign the book. Unfortunately, their interaction was cut short as the town's security forces entered the scene. One of the gang members hurriedly alerted Blackjack. Upon hearing this, the bandits prepared to make their escape. However, as chaos erupted, Blackjack swiftly shot a threatening customer, sending him flying out of the way. Amidst the ensuing shootout, Sonny discovered that Dolly had been wounded by a stray bullet and was in dire need of help. Determined to assist her, Sonny also came across a fellow gang member injured by gunfire and rushed to his aid. Eventually, the outlaws managed to escape the town, carrying their ill-gotten gains. After putting enough distance between themselves and sweet water, Blackjack ordered the gang to halt and divide the spoils. Aware that some of their comrades had lost their lives, Blackjack warned the survivors that the journey ahead would be even more treacherous, and more lives might be lost. Upon hearing this, Blackjack's brother, Badger, injured from the previous ordeal, reassured them that he could continue. Thus, they pressed on. Several hours later, Blackjack noticed that the pursuing security forces were gaining on them. They had no choice but to keep moving without rest. Sonny, however, grew concerned about Badger's injury and believed he needed a break. But Badger insisted on persevering, despite Sonny's predictions. Sadly, Sonny's concerns proved valid, and Badger fell behind. Stepping up, Sonny supported and accompanied him during their arduous journey. The following day, Badger, weakened by the loss of blood, finally tumbled from his horse. Sensing his impending death, Badger pleaded with his comrades to put him out of his misery, but they refused. As the others departed, Badger called upon Sonny to seek a different path in life, one far removed from the dark existence they led, a life starkly contrasting the novel Sonny was reading. In a heartbreaking turn, Badger requested Sonny to end his suffering. Despite never having fired a weapon before, Sonny reluctantly carried out Badger's final wish, bringing an end to his torment. The sound of gunshots attracted Kevin's attention, prompting him to return and commend his nephew for proving his usefulness to the group. However, a sudden burst of gunfire from an unknown assailant behind the cliff startled them. It became evident that Sonny had been hit in the leg by a bullet fired by the pursuing security forces positioned atop the cliff. Spotting the approaching authorities, the group hastily fled, triggering a relentless chase and shootout. While on the run, a bullet struck the horse carrying their loot, prompting Blackjack to consider retrieving it. Yet, upon realizing the security forces closing in, Kevin firmly asserted that abandoning the money was the wiser choice to prevent needless deaths. Eventually, the pursuing security forces decided to call off their hunt. The Blackjack gang pressed on with their escape, navigating through a treacherous sandstorm, yet yielding no fruitful outcome. After a time, they emerged from the tempest to an astonishing sight. A vibrant, verdant landscape awaited them, leaving them in awe. While venturing through the peculiar forest, they stumbled upon a solitary Native American man seated before a seemingly pointless gate. Soon after, they discovered a small town. As Blackjack and his men entered, the townsfolk gazed at them with astonishment. Sheriff Forrest stepped forward to greet them. Blackjack eventually confessed that they were herders who had been attacked by Apache Indians, leaving them destitute and seeking refuge in the town. Upon hearing their plight, Sheriff Forrest extended his kindness by offering them a place to rest their horses, drink at the bar, and stay at the hotel without charge. The bandits couldn't believe the sheriff's generosity, yet they found themselves unable to refuse such a gracious offer. Blackjack then asked Forrest to guide them to the telegram office, feigning the need to contact the cattle owner. However, Forrest revealed that their town was disconnected from the outside world. Afterward, Forrest assigned Deputy Glenn to accompany them for rest, while a woman named Rose led the injured members to the doctor. Before parting ways, Forrest reminded them to refrain from using profanity within the town, except when in the bar. As Rose continued to escort the wounded, Sonny inquired about how long she had been residing there. Rose provided a detailed response, revealing that she had been in the town for precisely five years, one week, and two days. They were soon welcomed by Dr. Woods. Suddenly, Blackjack experienced a flicker of recognition upon seeing Sheriff Forrest, though he couldn't quite place where they had met before. He informed the others that the townsfolk were unarmed, making them easy targets for looting. The scene shifted back to Dr. Woods. While observing him, Sonny claimed to have encountered him somewhere in the past. However, Woods explained that he had indeed lived where Sonny had mentioned, but it was long before Sonny's birth. Following the treatment, Rose inquired about how many men Sonny had killed. 
She also questioned why Sonny and his companions possessed a surprisingly small amount of rope for a herding group. Sonny refused to answer, prompting Rose to depart. However, Sonny couldn't hold back and admitted that he had only killed one person who had requested such an action. Unfortunately, Rose glanced back in that moment. Simultaneously, Dr. Woods revealed to Forrest, Glenn, a shop owner named Brooks, and a farmer named Lamb the bullets he had extracted from the herding group. According to Forrest, these bullets were never used by the Indians, leading them to suspect that the Blackjack gang was not a group of herders. However, Forrest wished for them to peacefully leave their town. Upon hearing this, Glenn disagreed and opted to drive them away. Yet, the others supported Forrest's decision, preferring to avoid unnecessary trouble. Meanwhile, Sonny joined the others at the bar. Before long, Blackjack encountered Woods, who happened to pass by, and introduced himself as Jack Smith. He invited Dr. Woods to join him for a drink, but Woods politely declined. As Woods departed, Blackjack couldn't shake the feeling that he had seen the doctor somewhere before. As the sun began to set, the church bells chimed, drawing the attention of Blackjack's group. They observed the townsfolk flocking to the church, including the bar owner. From this, they deduced that the town was populated by deeply religious people. Cavan remarked that their mission would be an easy endeavor in such a place. Hearing this, Sonny inquired about Cavan's intentions, but Cavan dismissively stated that it was none of his concern. Once the church service concluded, Sonny approached Rose, explaining that the man he had shot was dying and had asked to be put out of his misery. Sonny shared this to ensure Rose didn't misjudge his actions. Additionally, Sonny confessed his fondness for Rose. However, in a drunken state, Cavan approached them and immediately assaulted Sonny for daring to approach a woman before him. Cavan even attempted to flirt with Rose. Witnessing this, Forrest became infuriated. However, in a surprising turn, Cavan brandished a gun and aimed it at Forrest. But before Cavan could pull the trigger, he was swiftly struck down and fell unconscious. After subduing his uncle, Sonny apologized and inquired whether they should lock Cavan up in jail. Forrest replied that they had no prison. He then escorted Rose away from the scene. Blackjack approached Sonny and asked about the altercation, but Sonny admitted that Cavan had collapsed due to excessive drinking. The following morning, Forrest requested Sonny to inform Blackjack that he wished to speak with him. Curious, Sonny wondered how long Forrest had been the sheriff of the town. Forrest revealed that he had held the position for a decade. Once Forrest departed, Sonny opened his novel and made a startling realization. The sheriff bore a striking resemblance to Wild Bill Hickok, a legendary gunslinger who met his demise in 1876 while playing poker and being shot. Shortly thereafter, Blackjack, informed by Sonny, finally met with Forrest. During their conversation, Forrest expressed concern about Cavan's actions toward Rose the previous night and urged Blackjack to control his men. Inquiring about the person who had incapacitated Cavan, Blackjack sought answers. However, Forrest clarified that he hadn't witnessed any townspeople engaging in such an act, as Cavan was highly intoxicated that night and could have easily stumbled on his own. Intrigued, Blackjack questioned why an unarmed sheriff like Forrest operated without a firearm. Yet, Forrest simply replied that they had their own methods. Meanwhile, Cavan and Sonny ventured to Brooks' shop to steal ammunition. As a diversion, Sonny engaged Brooks in a conversation about the characters in his novel collection. In response, Brooks intended to showcase a selection of classic novels he had for sale. In that moment, Sonny realized Brooks bore a resemblance to the infamous outlaw Jesse James, who met his end in 1882, killed by members of his own gang. However, Brooks vehemently denied any connection. Their conversation was abruptly interrupted when Cavan accidentally dropped some items while concealing stolen ammunition in his coat. Cavan then distributed the pilfered ammunition to their group. However, they noticed Brooks engaging in conversation with the sheriff, and it seemed likely that Brooks had discovered Cavan's thievery. Fatigued by the need for politeness, Blackjack finally ordered his men to unleash havoc upon the town, plunging it into chaos. Amidst the unfolding chaos, Forrest kindly implored Blackjack to rein in his men. Unfortunately, Blackjack disregarded the sheriff's plea. Consequently, Forrest positioned himself at the church door, withstanding the barrage of knives thrown by Blackjack's men. Their intention shifted from harming Forrest to killing him. Yet, just as the third assailant prepared to throw his blade, a surprising turn of events unfolded. The women of the town gathered overhead. Suddenly, lightning struck one of Blackjack's men, ending his life. Witnessing this unexpected occurrence, Blackjack and his men fell into a stunned silence. After everyone had dispersed, the Native American gatekeeper arrived and carried the deceased man's body to a mysterious gate located outside the town. As night descended, Sonny stole a glimpse of Rose engaged in prayer. Impatience eventually got the better of him, and he drifted off to sleep. However, he was roused from his slumber by the sound of a passing horse-drawn carriage. Soon after, the townspeople emerged from the church to welcome a new arrival, Dolly. Witnessing this, Sonny gasped in disbelief, for he vividly remembered Dolly's death. Before departing, the coachman handed a white rose to Forrest and cryptically mentioned that Forrest would be able to return home in a few days. Perplexed by the turn of events, Sonny attempted to catch up with the carriage but lost sight of it. 
The following day, Sonny approached Forrest and Dolly, insistent that Dolly had died in his arms in sweet water. He was certain, as Dolly was the first person he had witnessed pass away. Sadly, Dolly refuted his claim, asserting that her name was Afy. Frustrated by the lack of satisfactory answers, Sonny hatched a plan to trail Woods and call out to him. Interestingly, this prompted a sudden reaction from the doctor, as if he were about to draw a gun. Sonny took this as confirmation that Woods was none other than Doc Holliday, a legendary physician and gunslinger who had succumbed to tuberculosis in 1887. However, like the others, Woods vehemently denied the allegation, attributing his reflex to a natural response anyone would have if called out to unexpectedly. This led Sonny to question whether the reports of their deaths were falsehoods and if the town served as a haven for notorious outlaws hiding from the rest of the world. Sonny finally disclosed his belief that Glenn was Billy the Kid, an infamous gunman and robber supposedly shot dead in 1881. Upon hearing this, Woods inquired about the true identity of Rose, leaving Sonny at a loss for an answer. Sonny then questioned why they had allowed Blackjack into their town when they could have easily defeated him. Inadvertently, Sonny slipped and revealed Blackjack's real name, triggering Woods' recollection of a notorious train robber. Sonny pleaded with Woods not to disclose this information to anyone. The doctor, however, issued a warning to Sonny, urging him to make the right choices before it cost him his life. Sonny sought out Lamb at his farm, immediately confronting him about his true identity as Lefty Slade, a renowned gunslinger and criminal rumored to have died from multiple chest and wrist gunshot wounds. Despite Lamb's denial, Sonny quickly inspected his left wrist, which indeed bore the scar of a gunshot wound. Lefty Slade finally revealed himself, confirming Sonny's suspicions. Before Sonny could delve deeper into questioning, chaos erupted as two of Blackjack's men vandalized Lefty Slade's garden. Consumed by rage, Lefty Slade retaliated, ultimately killing one of the intruders. However, the weight of his actions quickly overwhelmed him, prompting him to scream and weep in regret. The townspeople gathered around Lefty Slade, who expressed the sentiment that his eight years of living in the town had been in vain. Suddenly, they noticed a gatekeeper waiting in the distance. Helplessly, Lefty Slade walked wearily with the gatekeeper, unable to resist. Driven by increasing curiosity, Sonny attempted to follow them, only to witness their entry into a misty gate. The gatekeeper returned alone, leaving Sonny perplexed. Meanwhile, in the town, Blackjack's men continued their rampage. In response, Forrest, calling Blackjack by his true name, ordered them to leave town. Enraged, Blackjack attempted to attack, but his punches failed to connect with the sheriff. Though Forrest had the opportunity to apprehend Blackjack, he faltered, allowing Blackjack to seize the upper hand. Suddenly, an earthquake jolted the town, interrupting the unfolding events. Reflecting on how his men had met their demise while attempting to eliminate Forrest, Blackjack's confidence wavered, prompting him to gather his remaining gang members. When Sonny arrived, Kevin barred his entry. Undeterred, Sonny sneaked in through the back door, eavesdropping on their plans to pillage and kill anyone who crossed their path. Disturbingly, Kevin revealed that he had Rose under his control. Upon hearing this revelation, Sonny hastily searched for Rose and found her swimming in the lake. Once Rose was clothed, Sonny noticed a bruise on her neck, reminiscent of Lefty Slade's scar. It dawned on Sonny that this must have been how Rose had met her demise. In turn, Rose acknowledged that she had been the first woman to be hanged in the Arizona area. Hearing this, Sonny identified Rose as Betty McCullough, who had killed her abusive father with a butcher knife. However, Rose disclosed that people often forget the years of abuse she endured at her father's hands since the age of 12. Rose's confession led Sonny to realize that the town served as a sanctuary for deceased criminals, granting them a second chance at life. However, according to Rose, this was their final opportunity. Following their conversation, Sonny disclosed Blackjack and Kevin's nefarious plans to Rose. Unfazed, Rose reassured him, for the town had experienced something far worse than death. However, Rose agreed to disclose the truth to Forrest and the townspeople. That night, Sonny joined the townsfolk gathered at the church. It was there that Sonny learned the true nature of the town. It served as a place for deceased criminals to seek redemption and cleanse their souls. Each person had to resist the temptations and impulses of their past lives for ten years to earn their place in heaven. A single misstep could forever shatter their chances of redemption. Upon hearing that they had no intention of fighting, Sonny, feeling disappointed, decided to leave. Unfortunately, he was intercepted by punches from Blackjack and Kevin. The townspeople, although aware of the altercation, chose to remain as silent spectators, not wanting to jeopardize their own chances of salvation. After the two bandits left Sonny unconscious, they brought him to Wood's office for treatment. When he regained consciousness, Sonny believed he was dead, but Rose reassured him that he was indeed alive. Forrest expressed his apologies for being unable to assist Sonny. Sonny understood their difficult decision and declared his willingness to confront all of Blackjack's men to protect the townspeople. The following morning, despite his weakened state, Sonny prepared himself to confront Blackjack's group alone. Rose and the others pleaded with Sonny to flee while he still could, but Sonny remained steadfast in his decision. Meanwhile, the church bells rang, beckoning the townspeople to gather for worship. As Dolly pulled Rose towards the church, Sonny professed his love. 
Witnessing Sunny's unwavering determination, Forrest ultimately chose to stand by his side. Forrest realized that for the past 10 years, he had only thought of himself, but Sonny inspired him to fight for the well-being of others. Woods interjected, reminding Forrest that he only had five hours left to ascend to heaven. Unperturbed, Forrest cast aside his rose and armed himself with a long hidden weapon. Glenn and Broke followed suit, willingly treading the path that they knew would ultimately lead to damnation. Sonny found himself deeply moved by the presence of Billy the Kid, Wild Bill Hickok, and Jesse James standing beside him. In another corner, Blackjack commanded his men to set fire to people's homes. At that moment, Wild Bill Hickok and his companions closed in on Blackjack, giving him a final chance to retreat. Fueled by overconfidence, Cavan attempted to launch an attack, but the legendary shooter, Wild Bill Hickok, proved his lightning-fast skills, rendering the bandits astonished. Unbeknownst to them, one of Blackjack's men tried to launch a surprise attack from behind, but to everyone's surprise, the man was swiftly shot down from behind. It was Doc Holliday who had decided to join their cause. The battle between the bandits and the legendary cowboys became inevitable. After an intense fight, the legendary cowboys successfully eliminated the majority of Blackjack's men. In the ensuing silence, Rose rushed into Sonny's embrace. However, Kevin, witnessing this heartfelt moment, promptly shot Sonny. Although Sonny managed to retaliate by shooting his treacherous uncle in the chest, Sonny didn't succumb to his wounds and surprisingly felt no pain at all. In that moment, Forrest recognized that Sonny had been granted a second chance and warmly welcomed him into their town. However, their respite was short-lived as Blackjack emerged, calling out Forrest's true name and challenging him to a duel. Reacting swiftly, Forrest launched his attack. Surprisingly, Blackjack seemed impervious to pain, leading him to believe he had become one of them. Unwilling to accept Blackjack into their town, Forrest swiftly aimed and shot him in the head. Within moments, the gatekeeper arrived to collect the bodies of Blackjack and Kevin. Passing through the misty gate, the gatekeeper brought them to the edge of a ravine ablaze with fiery lava. With a grim fate awaiting them, Kevin and Blackjack cried out in agony as they were consumed by the flames. At the gate, Glenn, Forrest, Brooks, and Woods prepared themselves to face the consequences of their actions. However, just as they braced themselves, a horse-drawn carriage arrived. The driver wore a smile as he beckoned the four men to enter, explaining that the Creator was all-powerful but not blind. Their sacrifices had earned them a place in heaven. The coachman extended an invitation for Sonny to join them, as there was nothing more to prove. However, Sonny chose to remain with Rose. Upon hearing this, Forrest passed his sheriff's badge to Sonny. The train then carried the four legendary cowboys to heaven, where they found eternal salvation. The moral of the story is that it's never too late to change and do the right thing, no matter how bad your past may be. Redemption comes from making better choices and being selfless, and that's how we find peace and a second chance in life.